Uh, the only way we're going to actually get the kind of future that we all know we deserve, we all know we have to work for, uh, is if indeed we all pull out and, and get to work. Now, not everyone uh, is going to choose to sign up and become an active door knocker, although it's a lot of fun. But there's a lot of ways we can be active by volunteering, by becoming a member, by, uh, by uh, fundraising, uh, by being part of the online conversations that we actually have generated here uh, through a tool that came through the DMZ at Ryerson, uh, which was uh, Soapbox, which is developed by a bunch of, bunch of folks here around policy generation. We need to start challenging the way politics has always been done, and that means doing it in a much more open fashion. And because of that, uh, as I promised, um, Christy and I are going to take a few questions from students here uh, for about uh, 10 minutes or so before we turn it over to the uh, formal press conference. So if anyone has any questions for me, uh, for Christia, uh, these are not questions we planted in advance. Uh, there is not a script that we're listening from. There are no barriers between me and all of you. We're doing it differently from the Conservatives. Uh, I'm more than happy. Uh, <laughs> But if you do end up with a picture with me and it ends up on Facebook, you may never be allowed into another conservative rally. <laughs> we do things differently, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to do it. So I will uh, turn it over to uh, the first question. There you go, in the back. Uh, what are you going to do to stop legalization of marijuana to increase global foreign investment from conservative governments like Russia, China? Okay, what am I going to do to stop legalization of marijuana? First of all, I'm not going to stop legalization of marijuana. I'm going to do it. Uh, and, and the reason is very simple. The current approach, the current prohibition that Mr. Harper is continuing to push doesn't work to keep marijuana out of the hands of our teenagers. The developing brain is more vulnerable and impacted negatively to a greater degree uh, by uh, the use of marijuana, and we need to make sure that kids don't get their hands on it. The current approach means that it's easier for kids to get their hands on a joint than it is for them to get their hands on a bottle of beer. So the only way we can actually prevent them from having access to it is by legalizing it, controlling it. It has a side benefit of actually freeing up the hundreds of millions of dollars we spend every year enforcing this prohibition, and also keeps the billions of dollars out of the hands of criminal organizations and gangs. So prohibitionists like Mr. Harper are going to have to demonstrate through facts and figures why they should continue this imposition on uh, adults making sensible decisions, informed decisions on their own, uh, rather than being all nanny state on us like they are. And that's why I believe in the decrim not just decriminalization, but legalization of marijuana. Next question. <laughs> Tough on immigrants policy, yes. One of the issues we have with this current government is every time they talk about uh, immigration or immigrants, uh, it's couched in negative terms. It's cracking down on marriage fraud, it's cracking down or quicker deportations, or it's cracking down on illegal refugees or smugglers, or it's cracking down on this or cracking down on that. And yes, you know, those may be legitimate uh, and indeed are legitimate things to be pre preoccupied with, but when the only thing that they talk about are negatives, in relations to immigration, uh, it's no wonder the Canadians' hearts are starting to harden. And when they talk about uh, reducing family class immigration and preventing uh, people from bringing over their parents and grandparents, they're not understanding that work uh, that immigrants need to be more than just units of production or workers. Immigrants are and have always been nation builders, and the narrow economic view that they have. Uh, is not helping us either uh, build the strong communities and country we need, but not helping us in the long term draw in the kinds of extraordinary people from around the world who want nothing more than to build and contribute to an extraordinary country like Canada with everything they have. So uh, we will absolutely uh, turn around the direction that this, uh, this government is wrong-headedly going on immigration. Uh, another question. Someone behind. There you go. <laughs> uh, Canada is many things. Uh, Canada is an extraordinary country filled with great natural resources. 
uh, but we are more than that uh, extremely rich because of our human resources. And the way we are going to become full players in the knowledge economy me means that we have to invest in Canadians, in their ideas, in their innovation, in their capacity to play in an increasingly globalized world where physical location becomes more and more incidental. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, as long as you can plug in through broadband uh, in a meaningful way and generate the kinds of ideas and entrepreneurship we need. And incubators like the Digital Media Zone uh, need to be supported and invested in as young people look for ways to be players in the creative economy, use their minds, use their innovation, use their edge uh, to be able to position ourselves uh, not just within the Canadian market, but around the world. And those kinds of investments, investments in education and innovation, continue to be, despite this current government's war on science and data and facts, continues to be one of the things that we have to emphasize. Uh, another question. Yeah. Um, is Canada's prohibition on marijuana so unjust that you would support widespread civil disobedience? Uh, I don't think I don't think there's a need for widespread civil disobedience. I think people have uh, have gone beyond that conversation. I think uh, what what uh, adults do in in the privacy of their own home uh, responsibly is is up to them. And uh, the fact that the current approach the government is uh, is uh, pushing forward uh, doesn't work and is completely out of sync with where Canadians are uh, means that even even as uh, uh, the chiefs of police. Uh, are recognizing that the current approach uh, doesn't work. Uh, you know, we don't have to talk about civil disobedience in order for there to be a change. We just have to vote liberal in the next election. Uh, uh, another question. Yes. Um, what's your position on our next step regarding Can you block out a shot, please? Thank you. Uh, the, the question of the Canadian Arctic is one that is going to be more and more central to our foreign policy in the coming years. Now, Mr. Harper uh, enjoys going up north for photo ops uh, regularly, uh, but in terms of meaningful engagement with either the people who live in our high Arctic uh, or the scientists who work and, and are very concerned about uh, the impact of climate change and uh, the resource development in the Arctic, uh, is, is something that we have to be very, very aware of. Now, uh, our position on our ownership and our sovereignty over the Northwest Passage is well documented. We're in a bit of a disagreement with uh, the United States and a few other places around uh, what that means, but I know that the first and most important thing that we can actually demonstrate is a commitment to the Arctic, to the people of the Arctic, and to uh, protecting the fragile environment in the Arctic. And our capacity to do that uh, requires leadership. Leadership that until now, uh, Mr. Harper has not shown, uh, preferring instead uh, annual photo ops of him shooting an old gun. Uh, you know what, uh, we deserve more leadership than that. And I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions, so you, go ahead. Um, my question is directed at Christa Freeland. Please, absolutely. Uh, so, Christa, you've had such a wonderful experience being a foreign correspondent. I was wondering how you're planning on bringing that experience back to hopefully a seat in the House of Commons. Uh, thank you very much, Jeffrey, you did it. Uh, uh, this is one of our volunteers and hardworking members of our campaign. Um, I would say two things. First of all, one of the things that I heard day after day, door knock after door knock on the campaign trail, and I was so excited and thrilled to hear this, is Canadians care so much about how Canada is seen and Canada's role in the world. You sometimes hear from, you know, so-called experts that so-called ordinary people don't care about international affairs and they don't care about our country's role and our country's image in the world. Nothing could be further from the truth in Toronto Centre. We want to be proud of our country and we want our country, as Justin said a minute ago, to be a role model, to be a big player in the world. I think that in order to do that, it's really helpful to have seen the world and lived in the world. And I'm really excited about bringing that experience and bringing that sort of global life back home to help us, again, do something that I know. I mean, I see so many people here who I can see have had global lives themselves. To help, you know, the world needs more Canada. And I'm really, really excited about working with Justin, working with the Liberals, to bring our country 
back onto its rightful place on the world stage. And our last question. Go ahead. It's a deeply personal choice that has uh, implications around their family, around their loved ones that they may have seen uh, suffer. And it's, it's a very, very delicate and important debate for us to have. And I've uh, been following the debate in Quebec uh, as they venture down this path. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing what people have to say about it. I have a concern uh, that until we have quality palliative care in this country for everyone who needs it, uh, euthanasia could sometimes be a shortcut. And I know in many cases it wouldn't be. Uh, but if we're not getting quality end-of-life care, uh, then uh, there, is, there is an idea that maybe it would be cheaper or easier uh, to simply uh, engage in that. And that's one of my real concerns about going down that path. Now, all sorts of different people will come at it from different perspectives, uh, either from freedom of choice or from sanctity of life. Uh, I think it's a conversation that we're, uh, we're almost ready to have uh, in terms of uh, having a meaningful discussion of the types we should be having in politics. It isn't looking for scoring points or looking forward uh, to try and paint your opponent into a corner as unreasonable or irresponsible. It's the kind of thing that governments need to be doing as much listening as we do talking. And I'm uh, pleased and even kind of excited uh, that we're demonstrating a level of political maturity uh, that maybe uh, we're able to take on such emotional and difficult conversations with an air of, of uh, responsibility. So I look forward to seeing that unfold, uh, and I look forward to participating it uh, in the coming years uh, and uh, perhaps even decades, depending on how it, how it unfolds. Thank you very much for all your, your, your questions. Um, we now... Uh, we now get to flip it over to uh, the, uh, the journalists in the house who want uh, who wanted a real scrum.